It's been 28 seasons since a Canadian team has won a Stanley Cup. Jurassic Park was the most famous movie in the world, and Bill Clinton had just been inaugurated as the President of the United States of America. So what's the deal? Who has cursed the American neighbors? What's changed since then? Is it really a conspiracy by Gary Bettman? We'll be exploring all that and a lot more as we try to figure out why a Canadian team hasn't won the Stanley Cup since 1993. Two of the winningest cup champions in NHL history are the Montreal Canadiens and the Toronto Maple Leafs. So it's not like Canada doesn't have a rich history of winning the Stanley Cup. However, the Canadians haven't won one since 1993, while the Maple Leafs' last cup was in 1967. One reason the drought is so puzzling is because of the ratio between Canadian and American teams. Currently, the league is made up of 32 teams, seven of which call Canada home. So if you were a gambling man, the odds would say that a Canadian team should win the cup every four or five years. But for the sake, we hope you didn't play those odds because the house taking your money each and every year. So what gives? NHL fans and tinfoil wearers all over the world have their own theories. A couple logical ones, a couple far-fetched ones, a few downright crazy but fun at the same time. Let's start off with a logical one. The economics of the situation. Canadian fans might not want to hear this, but the reality is that the American market is just way more profitable for both players and teams. The Canadian dollar and their tax system aren't really player friendly, which causes free agents to look the other way and sign with teams in America instead. Also, the cap limit introduced in 2005 is another barrier for Canadian teams to overcome as now they can't spend as much while having a less than favorable tax system for players. Of course, just because you can spend a lot of money doesn't mean you'll win the cup, just ask the Rangers, but it sure helps to build a contending team. Realistically, there aren't enough incentives for players to stay in Canada, when both their popularity and pockets can get fatter by moving down a few kilometers to America. Now that a possible logical one's out of the way, let's look at a far-fetched one. A theory that is out there says that Canadians are behind the eight ball when it comes to European talent. If you look at the landscape of the NHL, it's clear to see Europeans dominating the game as much as anyone else. But some believe that Canadians just want to watch Canadians play their Canadian game the Canadian way. One just has to listen to how someone like Don Cherry critiques European players. Therefore, Canadian teams don't aggressively pursue European players and end up with a lesser product because of that. This could explain why Canadian teams have come up short in their bid to win the cup, but then again, it may just be a single piece of the larger picture. Let's go back to another boring but possibly logical reason. The pressure is too much. Hockey is the sport in Canada. While in other countries you have several sports and other entertainment to keep the fans happy and busy while their teams tank and rebuild through high draft picks. But in Canada, people care about and love the game so much. Just look at the sold out Maple Leaf games who have a league record Stanley Cup drought of 55 years in county. And yet, can demand some of the highest ticket prices because of the love Canadians have for hockey. But this causes two plausible issues. First, teams are less likely to outwardly tank because they know they'll be scrutinized daily and will be front page news for several of their local papers. The Flames have never picked higher than fourth, while the Canucks never have had a first overall pick in franchise history. Meanwhile, American teams like Chicago and Tampa Bay have tanked and drafted stars for quick rebuilds and have won Stanley Cups in this manner. The second issue that comes from the love of hockey is the pressure of the players. Because hockey is everywhere in Canada, if a player doesn't perform up to par, they'll find themselves the topic of conversation on blogs, radio, and even water cooler talk. Some players thrive in this type of pressure environment where every performance seems like a make it or break it moment. But for others, it's too much. They can shy away from taking risks and living under the public eye. Instead, they may go the less stressful route and choose a different market so they aren't scrutinized by fans and media while living more of a private life. 
Now, let's jump out to two crazy conspiracy theories. Is it a coincidence that a Canadian team hasn't won a cup since Gary Bettman became commissioner of the NHL? Well, yes, it probably is, but that's no fun. Instead, we'll wear our tin foils for this one and point out the fact that Bettman has aggressively pursued the American market, has tried his best to popularize and monetize the game in America compared to Canada. And the best way to do this is to ensure that American teams keep winning the cup. So it's pretty logical that this is the real reason why Canadians haven't won since 1993. But we'll keep looking into it further. And when you do look into it, you can see another pretty obvious reason the refs have it in for the Canadians. Just ask Flames fans who watched the conspiracy go down live as Martin Jelion scored in the crucial Game 6 of the Stanley Cup, only for it to be disallowed after reviewing the matter. It won't be a surprise to find out that Bettman himself was in the review room telling the refs what to say. With the case clearly cracked, we'll just throw out a few random theories for fun. One being poor management. The reality of the situation is that a single player can't make a world of difference in the NHL like he can in a sport like the NBA. In basketball, you can draft a young superstar like Luka Doncic, and he alone can guarantee playoff appearances and possible title contention. All you need is a couple pieces around him and you'll be golden because Luka can play the majority of the game. But in the NHL, someone like Connor McDavid, who has a huge impact when he's on the ice, might only be on it for 20 to 25 minutes, while the rest of the time he's sitting down and watching the game. So it's much more important to have a well-rounded team with talented players at several positions within the lineup in order to compete in the NHL. Canadian teams just haven't been able to figure out this formula as well as American teams. You can blame poor management for that, or the tax system or good old-fashioned bad luck. Maybe the most boring and most realistic reason of all, winning the Stanley Cup is hard. You need several factors to go right, and you still might come up short if you don't have plain dumb luck on your side. We don't know what the Canadian teams have done to anger the hockey gods, but they must have done something as they've come close to winning, but have missed out several times. Since 93, six Canadian teams have made it to the final and four of them have even pushed the series to a Game 7. Out of these six teams, several have had just really bad luck. All you have to do is to look at the Canucks hitting the crossbar in 94, or the previously mentioned no goal for the Flames, and even the injuries for the Oilers in 06 to see the wrath, the hockey gods going against the Canadian hockey scene. In boxing, Fighters often say that the difference between winning a match and losing it can't come down to zigging when you should have zagged. Meaning instead of moving their head to the right, if they have gone left, they could have had their hand raised. That seems to be the story for the Canadian team since 1993. They've zigged when they should have zagged and have found themselves coming up short repeatedly. Either with draft picks or close goals or injuries, or even with laws and economic policies. So what do you guys think is the reason why no Canadian team has won since 1993? Of course, apart from the obvious Bettman conspiracy. And if you've had to put your money on it, which Canadian team will finally break the drought when the time comes?